everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to have a blast from the past. We're going to play Lord of the Rings the board game. I think I did this about a year ago. Except for we're going to play the Anniversary Edition. Yes, I got the Anniversary Edition. The only bad thing is, is the expansions are not compatible. Oh, bummer. Didn't realize that when I got it, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. I should have done my research. So <laughs> because of that, we're just going to play the base game. But I guess it, it'll let me show you something different anyways, because I played with the Friends and Foe expansion. So this will be if you just get the Anniversary Edition, this is what you're going to see. I still really like the game this way. I do miss the extra boards, uh, but I don't really miss the foes, to be quite honest. I, I The foes just add more complexity, which... I don't really know that you need here. So without further ado, let's jump in and start our playthrough. The first thing you'll want to do when setting up the game is pick out your hobbits. If you're playing a two-player game, which is what I'm going to be doing, you play with Sam and Frodo. I've done this before and I lost. I'm hoping maybe we can pull out a win here. <laughs> uh, Sam here has a, an ability and so does Frodo. So Frodo's ability is you can use any of the brown quest cards. So it used to be white and oh, I can't even remember, gray. Yeah, white and gray. He can now use brown quest cards as wilds. So instead of them uh, being the white ones, you can see that these ones are gray, so those ones won't work. But let's see, here's a brown one. So those will be considered wild for him, which is cool. And then we have Sam here. He has the threat die cannot cause you to discard more than a single card or make you move up more than a single space on the corruption track. And here is the die. The die looks really cool. I am not excited to roll this thing. Uh, we'll see how this works during the playthrough. Here we have Frodo and Sam's miniatures, and we're going to place them out on the corruption track. Because Frodo starts with the ring, we'll grab the ring and give that to the Frodo player. You'll grab the corruption board that we have here, and you'll place your two miniatures at the zero number. And if you're playing a normal game like we are, we're going to place Sauron, or this is more like Sauron's minion, at 12. If you want a slightly easier game, you can put it at 15. If you want a harder game, you can put it at 10. It, when you're playing with the base game, there's almost no way to move him backwards. So, yeah, starting at 12, he's I mean, he's only 12 steps away from one of our hobbits. If ever one of our hobbits reaches the same space or goes farther than him on the corruption track, they have been eliminated from the game. And hey, if you are carrying the ring when that happens, guess what? You lose. <laughs> Up here I have all the special cards that we can potentially find in the different locations like Rivendell, Moria, Lothrian, Helm's Deep, Shelob's Lair, and Mordor. So I have those cards set up up there. We also have our quest deck here, which used to be called the Hobbit deck. These are going to be our action cards that we are going to use throughout the game. Just give them a shuffle and you're good to go. Finally, you're going to grab all these different tokens. We have our story tiles. What we're going to do with these is I'm going to flip them over and shuffle them up. That is, we're going to use those for every one of the conflict boards that we go through. There are a total of four. Let's hope we can get through them. We have our life tokens here. Just set them off to the side. You're going to hopefully gain one of each type for each player whenever you go to a conflict board. You have your rune tokens here. We've got one, twos, and threes. You can separate those out individually. And then you see these ones that have the gold. Those ones you randomly will draw from a pile of them. So I'm going to flip them over and mess them up and we'll randomly grab them whenever we see a gold rune on one of the conflict boards. We have five Gandalf cards. We're just going to set those aside and during the game we can use five runes to activate one of these Gandalf cards and help us out. Lastly, we're going to grab our action marker here and place it in bag end. That's where we're going to start because, of course, we are the hobbits starting in bag end. If you remember from the first edition of this game from in 2000, those are cones, and I can always think of cones of Dunshire <laughs> uh, from Parks and Rec, but now they've got this nice Gondorian tree on it. I like that a lot, although the I do miss the 3D-ness of the actual cone. With this, though, I think we're ready to jump into the playthrough. Nice and easy to set up the game. One of the things I love about this game. So the first thing we get to do, each player is going to draw six quest cards. Then the ring bear may decide to roll this die. OK, and then we can draw and distribute four more quest cards among the players. Then one player has to discard two shield cards. Otherwise, we have to move the eye forward one space, and that's that horse now. It's a, it's a horse instead of an eye. One space up on the corruption track. 
Here we have our six cards for each of our players. I definitely think I'm going to have Frodo roll the die so we can distribute four more cards. Let's give this a roll. Great. So we're going to move two up on the corruption track. I'll show that in a second. But that means we can take one, two, three, four more cards, and then we can distribute them the way that we would like. And I think I'm just going to do two of each of these to our teammates. Because we gained this benefit of additional cards, Frodo unfortunately is going to move up two spaces on the corruption track. And then I don't really fancy discarding two cards right off the bat. I know, I know. I'm moving him forward one space to the 11 spot. Yeah, I'm just making this a little more challenging. Why not? We've now completed our time in Bag End. Let's go ahead and move over to Rivendell. If you've seen my playthrough from before, there was actually a Bree spot here that we'd go to Bree before going to Rivendell. Uh, but with the base game, you just immediately move to Rivendell. In Rivendell, the first thing we'll do is the active player, which is always Frodo, uh, because he has the ring at the beginning, will distribute the legendary items of Rivendell. And legendary items are these green cards you can see here. Those can be played at any time. Then we have a council. Each player can pass one card face down to the player to the left. Well, I'll just do it face up if I can. And then each player has to discard one friendship card. Otherwise, they have to roll the die. The legendary cards are pretty gosh darn powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and have the Mithril Shirt and Miravor go over to Frodo. And we'll have Gandalf Staff and Ethelos go over to Sam. Now, there's all these non-legendary cards, so I think what I'm supposed to do is just shuffle these up and randomly distribute them. So we'll have Gimli, we have Gandalf, Sting, well that's actually really good, Glamdring, Andril, we've got Aragorn over there, Boromir, and we have Legolas. So all of these cards will go to Sam, and these ones will go to Frodo. Finally, we'll each discard one card with the friendship symbol. You can see there's a friendship symbol here, so we do not have to roll the black die. And we are done in Rivendell. Let's head off to Moria. Those first two locations that we went to, Bag End and Rivendell, they're both considered safe havens. We're now in Moria. Moria is considered a conflict location, so we're actually going to use a conflict board. So let's set that up and start working our way through Moria so we can get to Lothlorien. That will be our last safe haven. After that, we'll have three conflict boards, and hopefully, just hopefully, we can make our way to the end and dunk that ring. Let's do this. Here we have our Moria map. Oh, I love this art. Look at here's the Belrog, there's Gandalf. <laughs> So cool. So what our goal is on this conflict board is we're trying to get this activity marker all the way to here. Once we do, we've completed this board and we can move to the next step, which is Lothlorien. However, we can also move to Lothlorien if we move all the way down on the event track to fly you fools, because that means we basically lost Gandalf, as you know, and lots of bad things are going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start using the cards that are in our hand. Now you saw we had two different colored types of cards. One are brown and one are gray. Each turn you can play one of each colored type of card. And remember, all of the uh, brown cards for Frodo are considered wild. And that's only these quest cards. But so if I play this quest card right now, normally that would give us moving up one on the friendship track. But he could use that as any symbol that he would like. The Moria board only has three tracks. So I did just show you a, a card that has the friendship symbol. If I played that, that'd be completely useless here. There is no friendship track. The main track is our battle track here. We then have our traveling track over here, which is flee to the exit of Moria. And then down here, we have quietly advanced through Moria, and that's our hiding track. And you can see we might be able to get one of these cards, the Book of Mazabul, if we happen to move this one up one space to here, then we gain that card. And whoever's turn it was, they would gain that card as we go. Whoever is holding the ring will activate first. So we're going to start off with Frodo. What you first do is you reveal a story tile. Now, this should be one stack, but the only negative, I would say, of this anniversary edition, I really like these story tiles. They're, they look way cooler than the ones from the original game, but they do not stack well. They keep falling over. So I actually have two stacks. We're going to go ahead and just remove this stack for right now. If we need to keep drawing, we will from that one. Let's go ahead and draw from this one. So we'll flip it over. Okay, so we have our first one. This tile is called Losing Ground. If the Fellowship can discard one card, any one life token, and a single ruin between them, there's no effect. Otherwise, the next event occurs. And you know what? We don't have 
any life tokens. We don't have any ruins yet, so we're going to have to have an event. And not only that, after we do this, we're going to go ahead and have to resolve the next story event tile until we have one that has an activity on it, such as movement or hiding, something like that. We'll move our event track down one space and we have speak friend and enter. The group has to discard one friendship card and one wild, otherwise the eye is going to move a step forward. Frodo is going to go ahead and discard two friendship cards. Now he can do that because these are brown. One of them he can use as if it's wild. So he's going to discard these two cards to satisfy the speak friend and enter. Now we can draw our next tile. And we have, great, we have a hiding activity tile. Let's move one up on the hiding track, and that's going to allow us to gain the Book of Mazarbul. Uh, Frodo will go ahead and put that into his hand. Once you reveal an activity marker from the story tiles, you'll stop drawing. Then you'll move to your turn. During your turn, you can do a couple things. You can play up to two cards, so one, two, or zero if you'd like. Uh, you can also move one step back on the corruption track, or you can draw two cards from the quest deck. Those are the three options. We're gonna go ahead and start off with playing two cards. I think the first thing we're going to do is play our Boromir card here, which is going to allow us to move up two on the battle track. And why not, let's play our Book of Mazabul so we can move one up on the hiding track. Moving two up the battle against the Belrog track, we're going to gain two individual runes. I'll go ahead and just grab a two spotter. So I have that. Remember, if I can get five, any time during the game I can call for Gandalf's help, which would be totally thematic here. <laughs> then I'm also going to move one up on the hiding track. And because I've now just covered one of the life tokens, I'll gain one. I'm going to gain the ring life token. At the end of this conflict board, whether it's by the event, uh, so we get to that last event, or we get to the end of this battle track, we're going to then look at how many life tokens we have. We need to have one of each type. There's a ring, there's a heart, and then there's a star. For every one that we don't have, we're going to move one up on the corruption track. So we need to make sure we both get those while we're also trying to continue moving forward on this track. Kind of cool. Let's move to Sam's turn. We'll go ahead and flip this one. Ooh, and we have a battle. So we're going to move up one on the battle track. That's not bad because that will also give us one of the ring life tokens. Well, if you ask me, I did a terrible job of distributing our cards here. Look at Sam's hand. All brown. <laughs> That's not great. So he is going to play. I think we're going to start off with Aragorn. This is a great time for Aragorn. Aragorn has two wild symbols, so we can use them as two of anything. I don't exactly know where I'm going to go yet. But yeah, let's do that. And then let's go ahead and play Glamdring. So I actually have four wilds that we can use. Now, with these cards, when I play them, I have to have both those wilds be one symbol type. So I can't use one for movement and one for, let's say, the battle track. Uh, I'm going to have to use both of them for the same tracks. And I think I'm going to move up two on the traveling track, so that'll get us two runes. And then we're going to move two up the main battle track, so that's going to get us two more runes. We only need one more rune, and we're going to be able to call on Gandalf. Let's go ahead and reveal our next tile. And this one is not good. This one means that the ring bearer is going to have to take one step up on the corruption track. Frodo will move to three, and remember, Sauron is already at 11. <laughs> Let's flip our next tile, and what do we have? Okay, we're going to move one up on the battle track. That'll mean we'll move to 16, and that is going to give Frodo a second ring life token. Not exactly what I wanted, but it is what it is. I'm thinking of being a little bit risky. What we're going to do is we're going to play one travel, and we're going to play one hiding. Our hiding is going to have us move up here, so we're going to grab one heart token for Frodo. So Frodo now has two of the ring ones, one of the heart, and then with the one travel, we now are going to have one of the star life tokens. That means we have all three life tokens for Frodo. That's great. Next, I think we're going to place the ring onto Frodo. <laughs> this is a little bit nerve-wracking, but when we do this, what we do is we're going to roll the threat die, okay? And we have to bear any of the negative consequences. So that means if we roll a three pip, which hopefully we won't, we'll have to move up three spaces on the corruption track. 
Then after that, we get to move on the main activity track four minus whatever we roll on here. So if I rolled this three, I'd actually only get to move one up on the main activity track. But if I roll a zero, I can move up four on the activity track. And what's also great is whatever's on that activity track, we can ignore it on any of the spaces that we move in because we're essentially hidden because we have the ring on. So let's go ahead and roll our die. There's one thing that I misspoke about. We get to choose which activity marker we want to move up on. That die roll of one means we will have to move up one space on the corruption track, boy. But we can now move up three on any of the activity tracks. You better believe we're gonna do the main track. One, two, three. Normally, when we move through these spots, we'd have to roll the die and take the negative consequence, whoever's the active player. We can ignore that, although we did miss getting a rune, I'm still gonna take that. <laughs> Let's now move back to Sam's turn. So let's go ahead and flip this over. Okay, so we have to have an event. There's nothing we can do to stop it. We'll move our event marker down and we have the Watcher in the Water. Each player has to discard one hiding card, otherwise they have to roll the black die. Frodo has a hiding card he's willing to discard, but Sam wants to keep his card, so he's gonna go ahead and roll and roll a blank so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> That's awesome. Remember that if Sam had rolled anything that would have pushed him up the corruption track or discarded cards, the max he would move up or discard cards is one. Okay, we're gonna move one up on the hiding track. This will move us to yet another ring token, which actually is pretty good. So we've got two ring life tokens and so does Frodo. That means hopefully Sam can take the ring because we all know Sam really should have. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Frodo did great, but Sam, yeah, if he can hold on to it, that means he takes less negative effects when uh, putting the ring on. Unfortunately, Sam does not have a great hand. He can't even play two cards. I could have him draw two, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use Gandalf here. I'm going to spend him, get the two traveling. This will give us our fifth rune, and then we get the uh, star life token. So we have two out of the three, and Frodo has all three. Let's now go ahead and reveal our next story tile for Frodo's turn. It is an event tile. We now have Stone in the Well. Reveal the top card of the quest deck. The active player discards two matching symbols to receive the Hobbit Pipe card. Otherwise, we have the I move forward and resolve the next event. <laughs> and the next event, you guys, if you can see it here, it's trapped. We'll go ahead and grab our card here. Okay, we have the battle symbol. So we need to discard two matching symbols for that. And I think, oh, this stinks, but we're gonna discard Andrill. <laughs> what a terrible use for it. But I, I think that's a good idea so we don't get trapped. That does mean though, we gain the Hobbit pipe. Unfortunately, we might become trapped anyways, because this could be an event tile. Oh, no, it's not. It is actually a friendship tile, which means that that's wild, because there is no friendship track on the Moria board. Oh, that's awesome. And I think we're doing okay enough that let's go ahead and end this board. We're going to move one up on the main track. That means we're going to grab all of these face down ones. Remember, we set these up at the beginning. I'll shuffle them up. And Frodo gets to gain one random rune symbol. So we're going to grab this one, which is a three. Beautiful. So actually, he has five as well. And so does Sam. So we have two Gandalfs in our pocket, so to speak. And we've completed the Moria conflict board. But now we need to see if we have sufficient life tokens. Frodo over here has one heart, he has two of the rings and one of the stars. For uh, Sam, we have two of the rings and one of the stars, but no heart. So that means he's going to have to move up one space. That seems oppositely thematic, but that's okay. We'll just deal with it. Uh, then what we do is we look to see whoever has more of the ring symbols or uh, life tokens. We're tied. If we're tied, we always just move the ring to the next player uh, on, clockwise. Well, there's only two players, so we're going to give the ring over to the Sam player. All in all, moving Sam up one space on the corruption track and getting through there relatively unscathed. I mean, Frodo is up at four. That's a bit scary. But overall, that's pretty dang good. I am happy with that. So we've now com completed our conflict board, Moria. Let's go to our safe haven, Lothlorien. We have here Galadriel. We meet Galadriel. The active player, which is now Sam, will uh, distribute the legendary items of Lothlorien. Then each player may discard two runes to either draw two quest cards or move one back on the corruption track. Oh my gosh, we, 
we might want to do that, even though we have two Gandalfs ready. Uh, then we have the Test of Galadriel. Each player has to discard a wild, otherwise they're going to have to roll the black die. Sam's decided to take the file of Galadriel because that makes total sense for Sam and the Lembus bread. And then for uh, Frodo, we're going to have the belt of Galadriel and Alessar, especially because he needs help. He's already at four for corruption. We're also both going to pay the two runes. It means I don't have enough to uh, bring out Gandalf at all, but that means we're each going to draw two of the quest cards. So you've got two here for uh, Frodo and two here for Sam. And then, of course, we have the remaining cards that are in Lothlorien. I'll go ahead and separate these out evenly. Uh, yeah, like so. Nice. Oh, we've got Arwen. We've got Galadriel. We've got the Elven Rope. Beautiful. Then we each have to discard one wild. I'm going to go ahead and have Frodo discard a wild. He's going to discard Sting, which stings. But, you know, Sam can deal with the die. So let's go ahead and have him roll the die, especially when he rolls a blank. That is one side of this die, you guys. But he rolled a blank again, so no problem. And now the true fun begins. We're going to go to Helm's Deep. We have three boards in a row that we have to deal with, and we don't have any safe havens. Let's see what we can do. Here we have Helm's Deep. I just love this art. Oh my gosh, the boards look fantastic, you guys. It's hard to describe how it looks in real life. Hopefully you can kind of see how cool it is here, uh, but it's even better when you see it in person. So we have the Battle of Helm's Deep. We're trying to get to 40. That's how we're going to move on to the next board. We're going to move to Shelob's Lair. We have up here with Traveling, Riders of Rohan. We can try and complete that, and then we can have the Ents arrive, and that's how we're going to get our stars. We'd actually have to get all the way up to there. Uh, then we have down here, we have our Friendship. We could get Theoden, we could get Shadowfax, we could get Ammer. But, of course, we're going to have to move up, or, yeah, down, however we want to say it, uh, through this track quite a bit, actually. This time, we'll be starting with Sam. Let's go ahead and grab our first event tile. And by an event tile, of course, I mean a story tile. Hopefully it's not an event tile. Or it is an event tile. <laughs> we'll move down one space. Worm Tongue Unmasked. One player must discard one friendship and one battle card. Otherwise, the remaining Helm's Deep legendary cards are discarded. I don't really want that. I'm going to go ahead and have Sam discard two cards. One is the battle and one is a wild. So we can use that wild as the friendship. Let's flip our next story event card. Oh, if we spend one of each of these things, we can stop this event, but we don't have any life tokens. We have runes, we have cards, but yes, yeah, so we're going to have to do the second event already. And we have the Riders of Rohan. If the friendship track is complete, yeah, right, haven't even started, then the active player receives the Riders of Rohan card. Otherwise, the eye has uh, moves forward one space and the ring bearer must roll the die. That means Sauron is going to move down to 10. And let's see if Sam can continue to get lucky with this die. Yes, he can. It's a blank. He is totally resisting the ring. Let's go ahead and draw our next tile. And we have the friendship track. And well, it looks like the game wants me to roll yet again for Sam with the black die. Because that's what he has to do here. Now, that's the one bad one on this track. After that, we can start getting good cards. So that's actually kind of nice that it happened to Sam. Come on, one in six chance. I've been liking it. Oh my gosh, Sam. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know if this die is weighted, but I will take it. Thank you, Anniversary Edition. Well, we have a nice mid of cards. Let's go ahead and start with the Elven Rope here. And then let's go ahead and do our Wild uh, for our second card. We'll move up two on the Riders of Rohan, so that will give us one of these runes, as well as we get the Heart, which is great. That's one of the three life tokens that we need. And then with our Wild, we'll move up one and gain Theoden, which gives us two travel. Let's move to Frodo. Frodo, what's your story tile going to be? Okay, if we as a group discard three cards, we can cancel this event. Yeah, I think... Oh, no. Let's let's take it. Let's... No, I don't want the event. I don't know. Well, the orcs are going to attack the gate because I don't really want to discard three cards. The, if the first section of the travel track is completed, it is definitely not. We need three more. Uh, but then we can have each player receiving one quest card. Otherwise, the eye is going to move two spaces forward. 
This is probably the moment of the game where you're yelling at me saying, why did you do that? I don't know, but I don't want to discard cards, okay? I'm, I, I like to hoard stuff. At least I admit it, right? <laughs> okay, our next one. All right, we're going to move one up on the traveling track. That will mean Frodo will also gain one heart life token. Great. I have no idea if this is a good time to do this or not, but I feel like it's going to be. We're going to use Gimli because, honestly, this is a great time for Gimli and where's Legolas? <laughs> We're going to play that and the Hobbit Pipe so we can move up two on both of these tracks. Moving two up the main battle track will give us two more runes, and that means we're back to having five so we can call on Gandalf. And two from the uh, Hobbit Pipe here means we'll gain a ring, life token, and we'll gain shadow facts, which will help us with our movement uh, for traveling. Okay, Sam, it's back to you. What is this one going to be? Okay, we're going to move one up on the friendship track. Actually, that isn't bad. One of the life uh, tokens, the ring life tokens, we'll take it. He only needs a star. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I think I'm just going to play one card this time. I'm going to play the elven brooch so I can move up one here and I'm going to gain Aomer. The nice thing about Aomer, he gives us two battle, which is really what we need on this board. That does mean we've got to get a move on on the main part of this board so we don't get so covered by all of these event tokens. And what we have is the Fire of Orthanc. Reveal the top card of the quest deck. The active player discards two matching symbols, otherwise each player rolls the black die. Now remember, Frodo is the active player, so the only advantage for us is all of his brown cards are wild. Uh, so he's got a shield symbol, so I could discard... Oh, you know what? I have a gray one. Oh, this is our elven cloak. We're going to have to use that, our elven cloak. That's two. We'll discard that so we don't have to uh, roll dice. Let's then go ahead and flip our next one for Frodo, and we have one up the battle track. That's going to gain him one more of the ring life token. So he has two of those and one heart token. And I think the two cards we're going to play are the Galadrium Bow and this brown one for two more of the battle movement. So that's going to gain us two more of these runes. So we have a total of seven runes. Sam now is going to go ahead and put the ring on. Ooh. All right, let's roll the die and see how far we can move. He can't be that lucky, can he? <laughs> yes, he can. You guys, this die is going to just save me. We can move four spaces. He doesn't even have to move up the corruption track. This is not a regular playthrough, just so you know. Four up the track. One, two, three, four. We are one away. <laughs> okay, now let's go ahead and move to Sam. We'll flip our story tile, and we have our next event. I was worried about that. If you look here, we have Orcs Storm Forward. Group discards one of each type of life token. We can't do that. Otherwise, the eye would move two spaces forward. It would be at six. Frodo's at four. So what I'm going to do is Frodo's going to call on Gandalf. We're going to spend five runes. Remember, we had seven, so we spent three. Uh, five of our seven we have two left and it states after moving the event marker ignore the event i do want to mention though that that means this one is done we cannot ask for gandalf's help in this way again all right sam what's your next one going to be ah uh, he's gonna have to move up one on the corruption track i say that like it's terrible but look at where he's at he is doing great even with that ring such a fortuitous person Looks like we're almost done with this first stack. Let's reveal our next one. Okay, we're going to move one up on the traveling track. That'll get him another heart life token. He already has one, so he has two now. The two cards that Sam is going to play, he's going to play one that's going to push him one up on the traveling track. That's going to give him one more rune, which means he has a total of five. That means we can call on Gandalf if we need. And then we have our final one that we need to get through Helm's Deep. Then we'll go ahead and grab one of these and we'll randomly pick one. Let's pick this one. So we have a two as well. So that gives us a total of seven runes. And we've now completed the Helm's Deep board. We almost had the orcs conquering Helm's Deep, but <laughs> we just barely avoided it. To finish this conflict board, we see here that Frodo has two rings and a heart life token. He does not have a star. He's going to move up one on the corruption track. Sam has two hearts and one ring, so he's going to move up one on the corruption track. He's also going to give the ring back over to Frodo, and now we've completed Helm's Deep. Uh, that's good. However, Shelob's Lair is probably the hardest board, and that's where we're going. 
And I am super bummed that Frodo has the ring because he's so dang close to the eye, but it is what it is. So we're at Shelob's lair, we just have to sneak past and kill that spider, so to speak, and then get to Mordor. Oh yeah, and dunk the ring. <laughs> Alright, let's move to Shelob's lair. Here we have our penultimate board, Shelob's lair. Golly, look at this. There's Sam with Sting stabbing Shelob. There's Frodo, his feet. Here's all the webbing right on the cliff. Oh, <laughs> all right, we've got Henneth Anoon over here. We can gain Faramir. He is my favorite. Definitely want him. Uh, our main track is actually the fight against Shelob, so we need battle. We have the long march up here. Look at how long it is. Now, if we get all the way up to here, I believe that symbol means whoever is the active player when you go across that will move one back on the corruption track. I'm not sure thematically how that works, but I will take it. <laughs> you can see here, this is probably where we're going to put the ring on, so we don't have to deal with that, hopefully. Yeah, let's go ahead and start. So Frodo is the ring bearer. So Frodo will be our first to go. Let's reveal our first story tile. You know you want to be a good one, right? You want to be a good one. And it's one up the friendship track. Well, there isn't any friendship track, so that is wild. I personally feel like in the books, Frodo and Faramir really get along. So I'm going to go ahead and have Frodo gain the Faramir card, which is going to give him two travel that he can use when it's his turn. I feel like of any time, this is a great time to bring out Galadriel and Faramir and use both of them. So Galadriel will use to move up two on the main track. So that's going to gain us two more of these wonderful runes. We want lots of runes here. You're going to see why in our events. And then we're going to also move up two here on the travel track thanks to Faramir. So that'll get us two more runes. That means we have a total of six runes. Sam will go next. Let's see what he gets. Yeah, he gets an event. Our first event is Gollum. <laughs> if only I could do that. Uh, group may discard seven runes to allow the active player to receive the Gollum card and all other players to draw two quest cards. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. Sam has exactly seven runes, so I think he's going to pay the full seven runes so he can gain the Gollum card. And look at that Gollum card. It is three wilds but then you have to roll the black die. <laughs> so thematic. Uh, then we have uh, Frodo being able to draw two cards. He gets one brown and one gray. Since that was not an activity story tile, we'll have to reveal our next one. And we have another event tile. This next one is Faces of the Dead. Each player either has to discard a wild, otherwise discards three runes. I'm going to have Frodo discard the three runes, but Sam can't do that. So he has to discard a wild. He has the Book of Earth or Box of Earth, <laughs> Book of Earth. Just so you know, if you can not pay the cost of either thing, you actually are fully eliminated. So you need to make sure that you can pay one of the things that are on these events. Well, Sam is finding all the event tiles. Let's see what our next story tile is. Okay, it is a hiding tile. That's a good one. He'll move up one and he gains one of the ring life tokens. I really think I want Sam to have the ring next time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Gollum and Arwen here. <laughs> this is a total of five wilds. I'm going to use the three wilds and I'll have to roll a black die for Gollum to move up one, two, three. And that's going to give us three runes here. And then for the two from Arwen, we're going to move up two on here. So we gain one heart and another ring life token. Now we have to roll the black die and we get a two. But remember, the most he will ever move from a black die is either as one space, or if you ever do roll this, he would only have to discard one card instead of two. He'll move to corruption four. We'll now move over to Frodo. Let's flip our top one. Oh, we have another event. We could cancel it by discarding one card, one life token, and one rune. Well, I think we've got all of that. We'll discard one ruin that's from Frodo. So Frodo has two left. We're discarding the one ring that Sam had. Sam had two. He now has one. And Frodo's going to discard the, this one card that he has. So that means we do not need to worry about this event tile. Thank you very much. Let's flip our next one. What is that? This is the Sauron's Will token. One player must volunteer to advance their hobbit two spaces towards Sauron on the corruption track. Otherwise, Sauron moves one space towards the Hobbit. Yeah, I think uh, Sam's going to take this one. I don't quite think I am ready to push Sauron up more. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go to here. And you know what? I should start looking at my legendary card, see if I want to do anything. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, here's one. I can play it at any time. We're going to go ahead and play a less R. One player is going to reduce their corruption by one. Yeah, let's play that now. Okay, that wasn't fun at all. Uh, it is still Frodo's turn, I believe. And let's see. Oh, no. Okay, that means Frodo's going to move one up on the corruption track. Things were going so well, you guys, and then something happened. We must have been influenced by Gollum. That's got to be it. Okay, finally, we'll move one up on the traveling track, and we're going to stop revealing these blasted tokens. That'll give us one of the star life tokens. Now, you might think I'm kind of crazy, but I think what I'm going to do is put this ring on to Frodo. I have the mithril shirt in my back pocket. It says that I can ignore the effect of a single die roll after rolling it, so potentially I can use that if my roll is bad. Don't be bad, don't be bad, don't be bad. Oh no, it's just, you know, the eye moving forward. But hey, with the eye moving forward, oh, I could cancel that. I think I'm going to. I mean, there are worse ones. Yeah, but let's ignore the effect. We'll play the mithril shirt. Uh, that means he will not move forward. And we would still count this. Let's say we had rolled the three pips. We would still count the three pips and we'd only move up one space on whatever activity track we're going to choose. But because we rolled the eye, we get to move four spaces on a track. I think we all know which one I'm going to do. One, two, three, four. We do miss out on this, but that only means we need one more and we can go to here. However, I only have one life token for Frodo. So if I finish the game right now, he's going to move up two on the track and that's going to mean we lose the game. So I don't think I want to do that. We're going to play this brown card. Now we're going to use it actually for the hiding. We're going to move up one. That's going to give us the heart token that we need. So now we're only missing one life token. Then I've got a plan to have Sam save Frodo, I think. Let's have Sam go next. And he's going to finish the track, which actually I was not expecting. Oh, bummer. Well, we snuck ourselves out of Shelob's lair or fought through her without uh, uh, me even getting past the second event. I will take that, I guess. <laughs> uh, so Sam will take another one of these ring life tokens and we've completed our third conflict board. Let's go ahead and look at our life tokens. We have two and one here for Sam. Sam does not have a star, so he's going to move up one. Frodo only has one of the stars and one of the hearts, so he normally move up one, but Sam's going to play Ethelos. One player ignore any effects of one missing life token for a single conflict. Yeah, that means he will not have to move forward, thank goodness. It does mean, though, that Sam had more rings than uh, Frodo did for resisting the ring, so Sam will take control of the ring as we go into Mordor. And, you know, all things considered, I don't think that's such a bad idea. <laughs> Here we are, the final board, Mordor. Now, if ever the events get all the way to the bottom, it says the ring is mine. We automatically lose. We have to not only get ourselves all the way to here, we then have to be able to roll the black die and not die to be able to dunk the ring. So the chances are pretty much non-existent, but I'm still going to try it because I think we can at least give it a run for our money. Sam is going to go first because he has the ring, and he is going to skip revealing the next story tile, proceeding directly to the play card step. Thank you, the file of Galadriel. We're then going to use Theoden here to move up two on the traveling, so that gets us up to 51, and we gain two more of these runes. We had three to begin with, so now we have a total of five. And then we're also going to move up one on the friendship, friendship track. That's our find new allies. That'll also get us one more rune. So we have six. And I didn't even talk about the different tracks. What's special or unique about Mordor is we use every single one of them. We have Battling here, the Siege of Minas Tirith. We have the Struggle Up Mount Doom, so that's the travel. We have Hiding, the March to Mordor. And then we have Find New Allies, that is the Friendship track. I love how it brings it all together for the final, the final board of the Lord of the Rings game. Let's now flip our first tile, and we have Moving Up the Battle track for Frodo. That's going to give him his third rune. That's nice. For our turn, what do you say we play Shadowfax? <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Move up two on here. That's going to generate two more of these runes for us. We have five now exactly. We'll also move up one on the friendship track, which gives us the army of the dead. The army of the dead gives us two battle. 
that's okay. It's not great. I don't really know why you need the life tokens. You can see the life tokens here. I don't think they're going to help us because we don't care about them at the end of the round. All we care about at the end of this board is if we dunked the ring. Uh, but it is what it is. I'll go ahead and put the army of the dead into our hand. And you know what? Let's be a little bit aggressive here. We're going to use the Guinan's Gandalf here using all five of Frodo's runes. The active player may use this card as two wilds. We're going to move two up the new allies track. That'll get us another rune. And we get gone, which gives us two more travel. And it's a brown card, which is what we need. We, <laughs> Our hand is very small. Besides our two legendary cards, this is all Frodo has left in his hand. Yeah, this is the diminishing resources is exactly what we're having in the actual book while we're at Mordor. Let's see what Sam can draw. We get uh, discard three cards or the first event happens. Well, like I said, I don't think these are really going to be that helpful. So we're going to discard all three of these so that we can cancel that event. We now only have two cards in hand. <laughs> oh, was that a good idea? I don't know. Uh, okay, we're going to move up one on the hiding track. That'll get us one rune. We have six already, so that's our seventh rune. And then I think we're going to spend five runes to use this Gandalf card. I'm telling you, Gandalf always comes in, in handy. <laughs> One player draws four quest cards. Yeah, I think that's going to be Sam. Let's see what we get. One, two, three, four. Come on. Be good. Be good. Okay. One gray. Well, we needed more gray than we needed brown, but it is what it is. We at least can play two cards. <laughs> I think the two that we are going to play is this one battle and this one friendship. That means with one battle and one friendship, we'll gain two more runes. We have two from before, so we only need one more to be able to activate another uh, Gandalf. However, we only have two left, Foresight and Healing. Healing looks very appealing. Moving back to Frodo, let's see what we get. We get our next event. And this one says, Sam says Frodo. Each player may discard three of the runes to either draw two quest cards or to move one back on the corruption track. I'm going to have Sam do that. Frodo only has one, so he can't. I think we're going to have him spend the three, and he's going to move one back on the corruption track. I know I'm in desperate need of cards, but I have to go through at least three more of the black die rolls, and getting Sam a little farther back gives us maybe a little more chance to survive, especially because he does have the ring. Let's flip our next tile, and we have another event. Oh, we have Gandalf's staff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play this. One player, ignore a single story tile showing either out of options or losing ground. That is the losing ground one, so we can ignore that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gandalf staff. Gandalf to the rescue. Let's see what our next one is. Okay, we're going to move up one on the friendship track. And that is actually kind of awesome. That means Frodo is going to gain Eowyn. Eowyn is amazing. She's a two wild card. Sam's then going to do it. Drop the ring on in Mordor. Can you believe it? The eye's looking directly at him. Let's roll the die and see what happens. Don't be bad. Don't be bad. Don't be bad. Okay, he's just going to move up one and we'll take four minus two. We can move up two on the main activity track. We'll move him to six and then we'll go ahead and sneak past this die roll at least. Okay, now it is Frodo's turn, and I think he's definitely going to play uh, Gone here to move two up on this track. That's going to give him two more of these runes. He has a total of three. And let's go ahead and use the Elven Boat for one more. So that's going to give him four total runes. He's got four runes now. Back to Sam's turn. Oh boy. Uh, he will move up one on the Friendship track. That's actually epic. Why I say that's epic is he is going to gain some purity. He's going to move one space back on the corruption track. I know it isn't fair. By the rights, we shouldn't even be here anymore, Frodo. <laughs> oh, I can just hear it in my mind. He'll take one step back. That is amazing. His hand is all brown, but he does have one travel. Let's go ahead and use it. That'll have him move on to the next die roll. Let's see what we get. You can do this, Sam. You can do this. That's a blank. He's not going to move. From here, let's move back to Frodo. Frodo's going to reveal this one, and he's going to move one up on the travel track. That'll have him move to 59. That's going to gain him his fifth. That is perfect. That's his fifth rune. 
We're then going to use all five of these runes, and we are going to use healing. One player, Sam, is going to move two back on the corruption track. Let's see if this works, shall we? So we're going to move two back to here. Then we are going to go ahead and play Eowyn. Eowyn's going to give us two movement. And then with that, since Eowyn is wild, we'll move one to here. We will use our belt of Galadriel. One player ignore a single icon before rolling. Yes, let's go ahead and ignore that. Then we'll move one more to here. That means we gain one of these face down randomly. Not that it matters. Oh, it's a level one. Uh, we now have to roll the die for Frodo, and there is nothing that I can do about it. So we're just going to roll it and see if he <laughs> he's toast. Let's see what we get. We get the eye. <laughs> With the eye, that means Sauron will move one step closer. Now we can place the ring at the edge of Mount Doom. And this means we're going to have to cast it into the fire. Now I'm pretty sure we've guaranteed that we've won, because we now have to start with the active player and roll the threat die. I'll roll it. Okay, that means that uh, Frodo is going to move one space towards Sauron. And unfortunately, that means Frodo is eliminated from the game. But look at Sam! Look at Sam! We'll roll his die. Let's see what he gets. And he gets a blank. Because of course Sam would get a blank. Because that's just what he does. And that means we have dunked this ring into Mount Doom. Although Frodo has kind of sort of perished. <laughs> so it's not exactly like the story, but it's close enough. Uh <laughs> That was awesome. And you remember how I was telling you about I didn't know what these were for? Yeah, I totally forgot about these events. These events make you discard those tokens, and if you don't have those tokens, bad things happen. So that's why you need those uh, life tokens. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure I made a mistake. I'm sure that it's not perfect, but at least I got to show you how the whole game plays out. It is a lot of fun. It is, I, I would say it's actually quite quick. You know, when you don't play with the expansions, it it's a very quick game too. So uh, I recommend picking up the Anniversary Edition if you're just going to go for the base game. If you want the expansions, they are not compatible. So you're going to have to get one of the older versions. There's a bunch of stuff on BGG that tells you which things to get. I really like the Friends and Foe and the Basic. I think with those two, I would be happy. Uh, but I also really, I mean, this art just looks so much better. The uh, components look better. So I'm probably just going to keep this Anniversary Edition. I, I think that I'll get what I want out of this game with what's here. Anyways, thanks so much for walking down memory lane with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you at the next stop.